This is the second video in our series on um, basically I'm going to be breaking down a project on how to build the foundation and frame all the walls, frame the roof and stuff for a two-story open floor plan. I will put a link here that you can you can visit if you haven't seen the first video. And then, of course, I will put links at the end of the video to the next one when it is made and eventually you'll be able to go into the video description box for the for the video on YouTube and click on a link that will take you to an organized list of all the videos in order when they are completed. So let's go ahead and get started. Here's our foundation already built with anchor bolts. You can see the garage here with the stem walls around it. And then this, of course, is the living area. Just going to kind of quick uh, go around here. There are the anchor bolts sticking up and they're all placed where they need to be. Here they are placed together because there is going to be a break in the framing plates and uh, most building um, codes or most building departments require that. So whenever you see them grouped together, there's usually a, a reason why and that's probably the that there is a break. Remember the anchor bolts are usually going to be six foot on center. That's a standard within 12 inches of each break and that would include the breaks that are right here. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what it would look like after the footings have been dug and or the dirt for the footings has been removed and I believe the footings are about 15 inches wide. They might be about uh, 18 inches deep. I'm not sure. You can actually see that the garage um, area here is a little lower than this area. You'll get a better view of that here in a second. And of course, for those of you wondering what in the heck this is, if you look at the first video that I made or, um, or follow some of the other ones, you'll notice that there's a stairwell here and the joists go all the way across from these ends, but they actually stop over here. So it needs a load bearing footing. A nice view of it there from the top. And you can see here where it's a little lower than the area above here. Now let's go ahead and form this baby up. So uh, again, this would be nice if we could work this fast, but uh, so be it. We uh, could just going to take a little longer for doing this ourselves. So we can see here that the large garage door entrance is here, the smaller one here. And then we have some forms here. This will be the garage slab, which will be sloping. Reason why we got to pour it separate. And you can't always pour this all at the same time. I've done that before. And uh, a little more difficult, but uh, your engineer would love that, of course. Another view there. See how nice and straight this is. And I believe our um, form stakes here are four foot on center, something like that. You know, you don't have to locate them where I, I have them. I'm just kind of have them where I would have put them. And uh, if I was building this, again, this is kind of a thought process for you to get inside my mind how I would do something like this. And something else I want to point out is that I have the dirt removed a little farther back. And that's so that, I don't know if I had a view, that's, you can see it's back. The stake is actually on the other side here going down. And uh, so the footing is actually um, going to be about three quarters of an inch past this. But if this is the finished area on the um form or the concrete foundation when it's done you're actually going to go about two and a quarter inches from here to the dirt and the reason for that is just so that i could drive the stakes in you know a lot of times uh, you'll dig this they'll come in they'll dig it all perfectly you know where it needs to be and then you drive the stakes and you're fighting it you're chipping away dirt for each one of these to drive down into the soil so just something to think about when you are digging the foundation um, for the forms. You might want to leave a gap in here. You might not. That'll be up to you. Now let's go ahead and set our rebar. And you can see here where the bars are bent at a 90 degree angle and they have a 
20 times the diameter lap. Um, I think I might have a video. I'll put a link in here um, so you can check that video out. That way I don't got to go into any detail on that. And of course, this might require a few more um, rebar pieces in here up a little higher. I just have this down. This will actually be what they refer to as a bond beam going across the garage. Um, they didn't have them a long time ago. And here's how the rebar would kind of go in or how it would be used to tie all of this together. And again, it's bent here and we have it on the bottom. So these two are on the bottom. This one here is up above. And I don't have any rebar going across. Sometimes you're going to need the rebar 24 inches on center going this way across this slab in both directions or wire mesh. I don't have that in here. Another view of it there. You see where the stakes are down in the ground here up against the soil that has been removed behind the forms. Another view of this angle. We can see here where the rebar is coming in here. There's our anchor bolts. Anchor bolts and rebar for the garage corner. And this, of course, is the side of the garage where the single garage door would be located. And we can see that the anchor bolts are going to need to be a little higher. They need to be above the framing plates. That is definite. So this would be a bond beam basically going across here to... Uh, um, connect everything together. Another view of it there, we can see the footing for the stairwell. And then, of course, after we pour it, it would look something like this. Let's strip our forms. And then the uh, garage would look something like this. Our little stem walls here. Another view of it. Another view of it there. And then we will pour the garage slab, which usually slopes about an eighth of an inch per foot. And nice to have some slope in it, of course. Quarter of an, of an inch might be uh, a bit much, but uh, I think that's also acceptable. And uh, that is it for the video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment area. And if there is something in the video where you need a little more detail on, then uh, feel, feel free to uh, leave that, uh, your comment in the comment area, and I will see if I can uh, help with that also.